Hello everyone, Dr. Carlo Oyer, board certified emergency physician and founder of DrER.TV. If you're watching this video, it's because you are at EDX Video Pro, which is another channel of mine, more specifically targeted at the medical health professional or healthcare enthusiast who just wants to learn about medicine and cases and cool stuff. We've been posting almost daily videos about cases and x-rays and EKGs and all kinds of stuff, but today we're going to have a clinical case. A patient actually seen by me in the emergency department that prompted me to go in this search for dermatologic differential diagnosis, what's going on, how do we diagnose this, what are the implications for the health of this patient, and I thought it'd be awesome to share with you all the results of all that. Well, this is a nine-year-old who presented to the emergency department with a skin discoloration. She has no significant past medical history, no diabetes, no asthma. She had had a recent cold, but she was COVID negative. She has no fever, no chills, no URI symptoms, cough, congestion, runny nose, and things like that, and no prior history of anything like this in the past. This is how she presented to the emergency department. She had this lace-like rash. You can see that it almost has a central area of clearing with a darker area of like hyperpigmentation around it. So like whitish, darker, uh, whitish, darker, and so on. And it, it was actually all over. It was upper and lower extremity. And it was asymptomatic. She did complain that she had a bellyache earlier before presentation, but it was gone at the time I examined her. You can appreciate that both the hands and arms, as well as the legs all the way down, are involved with this rash. And honestly, I never seen it this bad. I've seen kind of mottled skin in the past, but nothing like this. And what was peculiar, this patient was truly asymptomatic, did not have any symptoms. So I did what any good doctor would do. I Googled it. But what do you Google? What do you look for? It's not really a rash. When you would press on these lesions, when you put your finger and press on it, it would blanch. That means it would go white. And then would you let your finger go, it would get uh, discolored once again. So the question is, what's going on and how do you search it? Well, I put on the search function of Google, I put the word, um, reticular skin discoloration. I don't know why that word popped into my head, I guess from medical school, school or some article I've read in the past, it just popped in my head. And I came up with something like this, reticulated eruption. Now I didn't look for eruption, I said reticular skin discoloration, I didn't type a rash. And a couple of pictures came up and I was very interested in this right here. Um, obviously a child with a reticular rash of the legs. And I was very interested in this because I thought it looked exactly like that. This uh, picture up here sent me into this uh, journal of medicine here, British Journal of Medicine, and into something called erythema ab igne, or erythema uh, fire skin. It's basically the translation of that fire skin. And it talks about this lesion that can be persistent and it doesn't quite go away and it lasts for a long, long time. So I thought, well, that's not it. Then I saw this one, I was like, okay, well, this is a kid, let's look at that. And uh, I found a couple other ones. So after a, a lot of reading, a lot of articles, then I started making what I thought was my differential diagnosis and what I thought was going on with the patient. So let's see where this take us. So a reticular eruption on a woman's back Okay, that sounds about right. This is a case presentation of a reticulate erythematous pigmented eruption on lower back. Differential diagnosis are like that. What to consider because that's what I'm trying to figure out. And the first thing that comes up is livido reticularis. And this is a vascular phenomenon of slow blood flow that causes a reticulate erythematous cutaneous eruption that blanches on pressure. I'm like, Yes, that sounds about right. The com most common distribution is the lower legs, check, and buttocks, not check, she didn't have it there, and it's usually bilateral and symmetrical, check, check. It can be associated with ulcerations, she did not have that. Like veto reticularis may be physiological or pathological, that means it might be benign or not benign. 
and physiological libido rapidly reversible on warming, whereas pathological libido is not. All right, that sounds all good. Then I found this one, a scholar article, Dermatological Manifestation of Venous Disease, Part 2, The Reticulate Eruptions. So again, going with that pattern of reticular skin discoloration. This is probably one of the most important dermatological signs that signifies the involvement of the underlying vascular networks and cutaneous vasculature. It is in benign forms of libido reticularis and in more sinister conditions such as Sneddon syndrome. And that one came up a lot in my searches. Apparently, if you have an underlying condition causing the libido reticularis, then you can have an increased risk of coagulation disorders and then therefore strokes and heart attacks and all kinds of stuff. So it's a good thing to go down that path and diagnose this properly and make sure it's not because the outcome long term can be very severe for the patient. There is considerable confusion in the literature with different authors having utilized a variety of terms including libido reticularis, libido racemosa, cutis marmota, and retiform purpura when communicating about the same or entirely different conditions. This confusion arises from the historical and geographical origin of this term. So you can see how uh, you end up with different names for the same condition just because one doctor thought it was libido reticularis versus erythema ab igne versus cutis mor morota. It might actually be the same ration. It was just called wrongly. The term libido racemosa has a European root. It's more widely used in the French and German literature. The term libido is a description of color, of livid or violet, not a pattern. The term reticularis refers to the reticular net-like pattern. I think that's very important that that's kind of gave me the clue or the correct search that I was searching for a um, lace-like pattern or net-like pattern of this discoloration. However, many physicians wrongly refer to reticulate pattern as libido or libidoid pattern. Finally, a variety of subclassifications of libido reticularis, such as transient, persistent, systemic, idiopathic, blanchable, necrosing, have added to that confusion. So let's talk about what is libido reticularis. Seems like at this point, it is the most likely diagnosis of this patient. It refers to various conditions in which there's model discoloration of the skin and describes a reticular or lace-like discoloration and surrounds a pale central skin. So, so far, so good. The terminology of libido reticularis might include cutis marmorota, its physiological and variable libido, and we see that in young babies. Cutis marmorota uh, usually occurs when exposure to cold temperatures and it disappears with warming. It's usual in little babies and resolves within a couple months after birth once the vessels mature and they're no longer sensitive to cold causing this discoloration. So it's usually self-resolving and not dangerous, uh, usually by 6 to 12 months of age. Cutis marmorata telangiectatica congenita is a congenital form of persistent, that one doesn't go away. Primary libido reticularis, a benign form of libido, which we usually don't know the cause. Secondary libido associated with underlying systemic disease. And this is the one that's important because this is the one that if you don't make that diagnosis, if you don't go forward trying to make a more definitive diagnosis, you're never going to diagnose SLE, antiphospholipid syndromes, hypercoagulable states, and so on. And libido racemosa, a generalized persistent form of libido. This is a little baby with a similar presentation of the libido reticularis flash. Libido racemosa often attacks the trunk and buttocks as well as the legs. The net like violaceous pattern tends to come in irregular, broken macules and annular pattern. It's a little deeper violet kind of color looks like. What are the complications? Well, libido reticularis itself is benign. However, thromboembolic disease due to associated conditions such as antiphospholipid syndrome may lead to arterial events, including death of the patient. That's where you got to remember that Snedon syndrome. Snedon syndrome. What are the complications? Uh, we just said that. 
How is Livido reticularis diagnosed? Livido reticularis res mosa is diagnosed by clinical appearance. Investigations are undertaken to seek for underlying cause based on careful history and examination. Extensive screening studies are unlikely to be helpful. The lupus anticoagulant pattern should be ordered in acquired uh, libido that is not induced by the cold. If requires, it is best to at least two biopsies from the red and blue and the white areas libido to ask for serial sections to be performed and so on. It means that you actually need to do a punch biopsy. You need to be seen by a dermatologist. Early signs of vasculopathy in libido race mosa are lymphocytes and histocytes attaching to endothelial cells and so on. A lot of technical stuff that really you don't need to know, especially me in the emergency department. The bottom line is they need follow-up. They need a diagnostic study to make a more definite diagnosis. What treatments are available? Well, there is no specific treatment uh, except for cold avoidance and warming yourself up for most of the cases. In some patients, the symptoms may improve spontaneously with age and rewarming of the area in idiopathic cases or treatment of the online causes of secondary libido may reverse the discoloration. Uh, I of note that uh, erythema ab igne or skin on fire or toasted skin syndrome as is also referred to, that one's more permanent, it can last for months. And it usually used to happen a lot when people were exposed to light fires and they put the legs close to the fire in the winter and they would be chronically exposed to heat and develop this rash. So it would be more of a persistent rash. Nowadays, we're seeing uh, erythema ab igni in people who are using laptops and that heat, constant heat of the battery on their thighs provokes the discoloration on their thigh and it usually goes away with time. But if it is a prolonged heat, then it may become more permanent. What is the outlook for libido reticularis? Itself is relatively benign. However, thromboembolic disease due to associated conditions may lead to serious arterial events. We already said that. Cutis marmorota, that's the one in babies, usually less evident with age. It goes away. Over time, primary libido reticularis and libido race mosa, the vessels become permanently dilated and becomes permanent regardless of temperature. So yes, you don't want that. So this is a really cool drawing. It, it kind of differentiates physiologic versus pathologic. Physiologic is a reddish purple skin discoloration that is web-like. It's most common in arms and legs, check, check. No lumps and bumps, check. And occurs with skin exposed to cold. Actually, this was one of the coldest day here in Georgia when this kid presented with this rash. So check, 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 check. Pathological, discoloration may be permanent, not transient caused by serious underlying medical condition, not just cold, spreads beyond the arms and legs and is in the buttocks and trunk. She didn't have that. Usually strikingly violet, very much darker, and forms a pattern of broken as opposed to a more, 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 more rounded, more perfectly round kind of thing. So what happened to this patient? Um, is that uh, while I got some consultations, the first pediatrician I talked to over the phone said, I don't know what you're talking about, Livido reticularis, so refer me to a pediatric hospital where I talked to the ER doctor there. They suggest I do a little bit of blood work for reassurance, not that the blood work was going to show anything. But then I thought, well, I might as well just try something. I got two very warm blankets and applied it over the patient and uh, ordered some blood work, so that bought me 45 minutes to wait out and see what happened. Well, people who experience physiologic libido reticularis exposure to cold temperatures cause the small arterioles that supply the skin to constrict. So the blood supply to the skin is diminished. The center of the patch of the skin supplied by this constricted artery becomes pale and the blood trapped in the tiny blood vessels in the perimeter turns purplish. That's why it causes that lace-like reticular pattern. Because of many arterioles will become constricted in cold temperatures, libido reticularis typically forms in large network of this circular discoloration. When the skin warms up, the constricted arterioles open and the libido reticularis disappears. So physiologic libido reticularis is considered normal phenomena, most commonly seen in babies and young to middle-aged women. Check, check. And this is a patient after 45 minutes of warm blankets. 
the libido reticular is completely resolved. She's completely symptomatic. Yay! We got this, guys. So, bottom line, she has physiologic libido reticularis, not erythema ab igni or pathological libido reticularis. She probably doesn't have any underlying illnesses and probably when she, as she grows, it'll go away. It's a sensitivity to cold, gets better with the heat. However, if this repeats, if it becomes symptomatic, it should not discourage the primary care doctor to refer to a specialist like a dermatologist for biopsies and uh, basically hypercoagulable workup. So I hope you learned a lot. I certainly learned a lot by taking interest in this particular case and looking up as much information as I could about this discoloration. And I learned about libido reticularis. We learned about erythema ab ignis. We learned about cutis marmorota in babies. And we became better providers, physicians, and healthcare workers for it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed it a lot. I learned plenty by making it. So uh, we'll see you in our next one. Bye-bye.